I'd like to tell you a little bit about ourselves. Our Rochester T. Kearney Patriots are a nonpartisan organization. We believe in limited government, fiscal responsibility, and free markets. John has been involved in local politics in Minnesota since 2010, branching out into federal and presidential races with a focus on campaign strategy, messaging, and community outreach. He currently serves as a grassroots field director for protectmyvote.com. Please help me welcome John Rillow. I know that you've heard about uh, voter ID, but maybe you haven't heard about why it's so important and all of the voter fraud that does occur in the state of Minnesota. Everyone's heard about what's going on down in Florida right now with their voter rolls. Everyone's heard about what's going on down in Texas right now with uh, Eric Holder trying to block their voter ID laws. Everyone's heard about what's going on with Wisconsin. But have you heard about the fact that Minnesota has the most convictions for voter fraud of any state in the country? You know, that's a story that's not getting out there. People are talking about how there isn't voter fraud in the state of Minnesota. That is absolutely false. In fact, we have the most uh, convictions. So in 2008, we can go back and we can look. But that's where most of those convictions have come from recently. Uh, Minnesota Majority, which is a group that uh, was founded, then worked on uh, voter uh, election integrity, and has now decided to work on the voter ID amendment in form of the ballot committee. Uh, that's endorsed by the author, Mary Kiffmeyer. We had uh, one of the co-authors in the Senate working at our booth at the Ramsey County Fair last weekend. So they decided to do that. Well, they went through all of the voter records and they found out that over a thousand confirmed people who did not have the right to vote in the state of Minnesota had voted. Out of that came over 200 convictions. In the state of Minnesota, though, you might wonder why if we have a thousand confirmed cases, we only have 200 convictions or so. Well, for voter fraud to be a crime, unlike almost any other law out there, the person has to know that it's a crime or be willing to admit that they knew that it was a crime. So even if they knew, if they say, oh, I didn't know that was against the law, they're not guilty of a crime in the state of Minnesota, which is, that kept over 800 of them from getting prosecuted. Um, so we also know about these things called PVCs, postal verification cards. I'm sure that you've all registered to vote at one point or another. You get that little postcard from the Secretary of State's office. It says, congratulations, you're registered to vote. Here's what your district is. Here's what your house district is. Here's your precinct, and here's your polling place. Well, in 2008, over 20,000 of those from Election Day registration were returned to the Secretary of State's office as undeliverable by the United States Postal Service. So they went through and they said, well, how did those get returned? And they started to investigate those. They found out that about 12,000 of them were from people who had passed away since the election. Uh, most of them came from uh, areas where the voter input from that registration wasn't done until about March. So in that uh, five to six month window, someone had passed away and moved, changed their name from getting married, or the handwriting was not legible and it was unable to be delivered. So they confirmed uh, about 12,000 of those. But over 7,000 to this day remain undeliverable and unverified. So what happens then is they're marked as challenged in the next election. But if they go, so if they go back in to vote, they'll have to present uh, their utility bill or something along those lines and verify that they do live there. But that doesn't do anything about the vote that was already cast. We didn't find out about this until March after the election. So there's a potential for that many cases of voter fraud, which brings us up to over 8,000. I don't know about you guys, but do you remember how many votes that statewide election for Senate was held to? It was under 300 votes. Yes, it was. We had statewide races that were decided by as little as 18 votes. And here we have a thousand confirmed cases of voter fraud. That is enough to swing an election. Voter fraud has consequences. We know what happened in that election. We know how many votes it took to pass Obamacare. 
We know how many votes it took to confirm Elena Kagan as a justice, and we know who held the closing, uh, who closed the confirmation hearing. That all came from, potentially came from that voter fraud. There was a big swing there, and polling shows that that's likely. That's a consequence. Well, right now we're out around the state, we're coming out, we're talking to folks like you, we're hosting events like this, we're hosting events in people's homes, we're working at fairs, we're walking in parades, we're trying to get the message out. So, what we're here to do tonight is ask you for your help. Help comes in a lot of different ways. Help can come from forwarding along an email that you've subscribed to get from us to your non-political friends who haven't subscribed yet. Help can come in the form of uh, walking in a parade and holding one of our signs. It can come in the form of coming to volunteer when we're down here at your county fair next week. Uh, it can come in the form of a check if you don't have time to do any of those other volunteer things or if that's the way that you want to help out. That takes almost no time. In fact, I've had a bet with somebody that if we added up all the time that they spent every day pulling out their ID for menial tasks, you know, if they go to the liquor store, if they use a credit card, if they buy tobacco or a lottery ticket or go to the bank, the time that it takes them to pull out their credit or their ID every day, they could write a check in under that amount of time. <laughs> so that's what we're here to do. Uh, we're here to talk to you about that. Uh, you know, this issue it's very important, and I'm going to talk to you a little bit more about consequences. I'm sure that you've all heard that we have very high levels of support right now. Uh, one of the numbers that floats around is 80% support. That's the highest that we've ever polled at, uh, and that was last spring. But we probably haven't been told by anybody is that there are 88 special interest groups out there that oppose this, including some of the usual suspects. You've got uh, the League of Women Voters who filed a lawsuit to try and block it and try and suppress the vote of Minnesotans to actually have the right to vote on something that was passed through the legislature legally. They are out there campaigning against it. Then you've got Take Action Minnesota, Alliance for a Better Minnesota is campaigning against it and contributing. Um, then you've got all of the unions who have lined up to contribute. And then you've got some that you might not expect. You've got the AARP who wrote a check for $50,000 out of their membership dues. Anybody in here a member of AARP? Oh. Didn't think so. But they used fifty thousand dollars of their members of their members membership fees. You know, if you've got friends who are out there, let them know that these things are going on. Go in, you can look at the campaign finance reports and you can take a look at ours and you can see where our money comes from. It's from Minnesotans. Because Minnesotans understand this, Minnesotans understand that they go out and they show their ID every day and they'd be happy to show it to vote and get election integrity. And you can go and look at theirs. Special interest group after special interest group after special interest group. All of them using membership fees. So, we know what Minnesotans want, but we also know that there's those 88 special interest groups. And there's also Secretary of State Ritchie, who uh, changed the title. You're gonna hear a little bit more about that later. Um, there was a lawsuit filed today, actually, in order to block him from doing so because he does not have the authority under the Minnesota Constitution to change the title. Um, and then you've got uh, Lori Swanson, Attorney General. She's out there campaigning against it. And then you've got the DFL who endorsed the counter group uh, opposing voter ID. This is a nonpartisan issue. Conservatives, Democrats, independents, they support it. I've got the polls to back it up. We've gone through and we've talked to them. But the DFL seems to have forgotten that and they sided with special interest groups and they decided to not support what Minnesota wants. So, we're working to get out there because those 88 special interest groups have pledged to spend $40 million nationwide defending or defeating ballot questions like this one and trying to block uh, legislation in other states that requires voter identification. Well, we're the only state right now that has a voter ID ballot question. We know that a lion's share of that money is coming here. We've done the polls, I've seen them, I've sat in on the focus groups. What we know is that Minnesotans don't buy their message the first time. They don't buy into the fear tactics. But if you get it out in front of them enough times, if 
they can start to buy their way into running ads all the time, if they start to spend some of that $40 million that they've pledged, then it starts to resonate with people. And it especially resonates if we don't get out there and start talking to people about the facts. Some of their myths are that the elderly will never be able to vote again, that it eliminates same-day registration, that the military won't be able to vote. They have the idea that somehow people, uh, it disenfranchises the poor is their message. I don't know about you, but I have never met anyone who is too poor to get something that is free. <laughs> I'm still trying to figure that one out. So we know that they're not telling the truth. We know that these are myths. We know that we have the evidence to back it up. We know that people in the military, their votes are taken care of by the federal government. That was established under the MOVE Act of 2007, I believe it was. But that's handled by the federal government. Minnesota law won't change their ability to vote. They can go out and they can still cast their absentee ballots. Absentee ballots currently have a little section right on them where you put your Minnesota ID number in there. There's a little box that you can check that says I don't have an ID, but your identity was verified. What this campaign is about is about holding all Minnesotans to the same standard. If you go out and register to vote, you need your social security number, or you do it when you go and get a driver's license or an ID. There's a verification process that exists. And then you can go in and you can use same day registration where you use a utility bill to verify your identity. And then there's the vouching system. The fact is, is that there's three different standards held the voters in the state of Minnesota. We should all be able to abide by the same standard. We should all be able to believe in our elections. We should all know exactly who should be representing us.